We're here today at Luke Crone, 615 units of housing on the east side of downtown. And I'm joined by John Betzner, our housing supervisor. Thanks for having me with you today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, Ed. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about a job of a housing supervisor in the Phoenix Housing Department. What do you do on a daily basis? Well, housing supervisor here at Luke Crone, we've got 615 units. Uh, that means we've got 615 households of various sizes. Our units run from one bedroom to five bedroom units, so we can have quite a few people here. Uh, our, day, our daily process is that we are admitting people on a daily basis, going through doing files, making sure everything adheres to federal regulations for new participants in the program. And on the same hand, we are doing what's called recertifications for those people who are here every year, they need to recertify with the program. We do that, and then the daily, everyday things that we do, uh, invoicing. Keeping up with a 615 just, just unit keep, complex. Exactly, keeping up with everything, keeping up with tenant issues, especially issues with the people, all the staff members who work here and the decisions that we need to make and, and the challenges that we face both with our tenants, with the program and everything that we need to do. And one of the challenges people don't realize about housing that the city has to run is the layers of federal regulation. So you really have a lot of rules sent from Washington that you have to be very mindful of. Tell us a little bit about how you manage those. We do have a lot of federal regulations that we have to do. The, the city also has their regulations. We have a very good set of guidelines that we go through. We are trained in those guidelines. And as long as we just pretty much stay to those guidelines and do things per the regulations, everything is just fine. And we come up with a daily interaction of something we don't quite understand or something new pops up that the regulation doesn't cover, and we need to deal with that. So, but it's not all regulations. It really is a people business, isn't it? Tell us about how that, that affects you. It's customer service every day. It's absolutely customer service every day. We've got 615 tenants here. We all live in a very close proximity together. They are in here on a daily basis. We average 25 to 30 people a day coming through the front door with questions, needing paperwork, I'm doing this, I've got a new job, and, and all of these require paperwork, which is part of the federal guidelines, is that we have a lot of paperwork we have to do. And dealing with that, and then we have the challenges that our tenants go through. Not everybody gets along, so sometimes we have to be the referee mm -hmm. you know, in decisions. We have other, other issues of, you know, does this comply? Do, you know, I work here, but does it, is it really part something I have to tell you about and things like that? So there's a lot of little things that amount to a whole lot of regulations and a whole lot of time spending on our tenants. So, John, we've talked a lot about regulations and numbers, but I know there's got to be lots of personal stories you've seen in your time here. Tell us about uh, some of the success stories that you've seen in housing. Well, absolutely there are. Uh, we have a real good one here at our facility with our front office person, Giselle. Her and her mother live in the Scattered Sites program. Uh, she is working here on one of the economic initiative programs. She just recently has graduated college. Uh, we kid her, she uh, has her degree in criminal justice and psychology so we keep telling her she's going to be a profiler like the people on TV and and we, we, we kid about with Jill's going to be running around with a gun so she's she is quite a success story she's she's out looking for a job now and hopefully she'll be able to do so but she has graduated and she's a great person and she's she is definitely a success story for our program so there's opportunities for people to get education to, to further their housing to even own housing through your through the department's programs. Absolutely there is. That's wonderful. Yes. So John, tell us a little bit about you. You've been a city employee, you told me for about 10 years. About 10 years. And you came to us later in your career. So how did you get to the city of Phoenix? Well, I was a, I was a general contractor, had my own business, and just felt it was time that I sold it, didn't want to really be in charge anymore of having an, to have my own business and all the things that come with that. So now here you are in charge of 615 Exactly, units, right? exactly, again. Uh, so I sold my business. Uh, I did a lot of interaction with building inspectors every day. I felt that that would be something I could do and do it well. So I went out in search of a job as a building inspector and the city of Phoenix hired me, which I did well for almost five years. And then of course, in 2007, the economy went down and then we started looking at rifts. I was fortunate. I lasted till the last rift in 2009. Never really thought that I would be rift. Uh, however, life happens. So you didn't start in the housing department. You started with development services, and then you took a bump to come to the housing department. 
and tell us about how it's worked since 2009. What's, what's happened to your career since you were bumped? It's actually been great. And, and I work with a great deal of people at every level in the housing department. I was very apprehensive. I was going into an area I knew nothing about. And now that's kind of a challenging, but it, that was very scary at the time. But I was very fortunate that with the people that I work with. I was building maintenance foremen. So I had some knowledge of systems and, and that kind of came natural. Um, I did have some leadership abilities that I think some people saw, and it wasn't long that I was an assistant housing supervisor, and now I'm here I am as a supervisor, and I've been on a continual pathway going up since I've been to the housing department, so it's been very positive for me. So uh, bumps can be a scary thing, but what would you attribute your ability to weather that to? What, what made you successful in coming through that, the bump or the riff? Well, it's definitely been my attitude. Uh, not taking anything away from the wonderful people that I've worked with that helped me through this, but it's how you look at things. We all have a decision. I could have taken a riff and just let it really get down, or I came over here to the housing department and said, okay, that I'm new to this. I don't know anything about this, so this is a great challenge for me to learn and understand what's going on. And then especially as I got into the administrative part of it, it was really a challenge and almost exciting learning about the people that we deal with and the special needs that they have and the things that we can do for them. So it gave you an opportunity to learn some new skills and build on ones you already had. Absolutely. Well, speaking of that, we're going to have to clear out of this room because in a few minutes, I know the kids are coming in. You guys do a lot of great programs here uh, at Housing, and thank you so much for everything you do. You're Thanks welcome. for having thank us you. today. If you'd like to learn more about the great programs provided by our Housing Department employees, go to the website on your screen. For On the Job, I'm City Manager Ed Zerker.